My guy, how are you? I'm good. How you doing, man? I'm all right. I see you repping the Coyotes. We got a lot of SDSU fans in here, though, Red. I don't know how you're going to feel about that. I mean, everyone has a preference, you know. <laughs> Even it, if it's wrong. It, it might be a little wrong, but, you know, they're entitled to, to feel the way they feel. That's right. That's for sure. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it. I I ain't wasting any time. Um, for people who don't know who you are, give a little background on yourself. Uh, I'm Trey Birch Manning. I'm from uh, Federal Way, Washington. I went to Todd Beamer High School, uh, North Idaho Junior College. Um, attended USD for three years. Um, just graduated this past May and uh, uh, just got done playing my first season uh, professionally overseas in the Netherlands. All right. Okay. So this is my guy. Uh, I, I'm going to call him Red because that's what he's known as. That's his nickname. So I, I probably you won't hear me calling him Trey. So if you get confused, that's that's why. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, obviously, you're not from South Dakota. So most of the South Dakota people who are watching this, they, they don't know you. They don't know much about you. So talk about high school basketball in Washington. Uh, a little bit and kind of how, you know, obviously your story is going to be a lot different than a kid from South Dakota making it to college basketball. So kind of talk about your high school experience. Um, I mean, personally, Washington basketball is, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's really competitive to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, there's a lot of talent, a lot of talent starting when you're young um, all the way up until high school. I mean, um, it's really, really, really competitive. Um, we have the privilege of actually having a lot of uh, players that have played in the NBA and, uh, you know, a lot of those guys put in a lot of work like Isaiah Thomas, uh, Jamal Crawford, um, you know, Zach Levine, guys like that, you know, they put in a lot of time and, you know, they're in, they're in uh, the position they are. But um, for me, uh, it, it's, it was really, it was, it was a good year. High school basketball was fun, man. Um, I think personally, my class of 2014 was probably one of the most talented classes in uh, the state of Washington, in my personal opinion. Um, we had a lot of talented guys that are doing um, doing a lot of big things right now in basketball and other things as well. Uh, so, I mean, for me, I, I had the privilege of, uh, you know, uh, I made varsity as a freshman. I don't know if I necessarily should have, but uh, there was a lot of guys that, um, you know, had grade problems and stuff that were older. So uh, my coach just gave me the opportunity to play. And um, I learned a lot right away, um, got thrown in the fire, which uh, was which was nice, you know, but uh, then I grew a lot and just kind of just kind of went through different roles, learned a lot as a freshman. My sophomore year, uh, I was more of a, I started um was more of like a defensive guy, uh, guarded a lot of teams' best players. Then my junior and my senior year was really a time where, you know, and I was asked to do a lot uh, offensively and defensively. I got the privilege of playing one of, with one of my uh, best friends, Bogdan Blizniak, who is um, one of the big skies, best players, you know, to ever play in that conference. Uh, Eastern Washington legend, college hoops. He, he was big time in college hoops. Uh, mm -hmm. And so me and him were running mates, and we had the ability to play with uh, a lot of people we grew up with. So we had great chemistry and, you know, uh, actually did really well our senior year and lost in the semifinals in the state tournament. But uh, we had a really talented team. So watching the state basketball, I would say, is, is really competitive and uh, – um, a lot of people get after it, man. So it, it definitely shaped uh, the way I play and, and my game and my career, to be honest. So you're, uh, you had to take a different path to obviously get to USD and you had to go JUCO. Um, and that's something that, that we haven't really talked about in the guests that I've had on is deciding to go the JUCO route. So when you were being recruited out of high school and obviously through AAU, you know, what – settled your mind on deciding that that you needed to go that juco route instead of committing to to somewhere um to be honest uh i really didn't know what what i was going to do and juco route was really um kind of a uh it, 
was a thing I didn't know too much about. Um, I didn't have too much interest in me, if I'm if I'm being honest. Uh, there was a couple of D twos that were interested in me, um, even some D threes, you know, that really really wanted me to go there. Uh, um, you know, but I really never heard too much from uh, any D one schools, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, I always dreamed of playing Division one basketball, and you know. So as a as a young dude in high school, it was kind of it was kind of uh, shocking for me. Not shocking, but it hurt to see like, man, I, I'm not a Division one player. You know, I'm not getting any of this stuff. And so just talking with some of my coaches and stuff, they, you know, they, uh, my high school coach, uh, some of my AU coaches, they told me, man, you should take, you should go to junior college, develop a little more, and um, see what happens. I think you can play Division one, and that's always what I believed. So. Uh, I just took my shot at going to play junior college basketball. I mean, you know, not a lot of people actually know about junior college basketball, and um, it's actually a good option. A lot of people go to prep school, and I'm not knocking that. If uh, you got a good prep school and you're going to develop in things, you should do that. But um, junior college is another way to play get college-level uh, talent um, and just develop and, you know, a lot of people go there for different reasons. It could be grades. It could be people in the situation that I'm in. But, uh, yeah, uh, junior college was, was a blessing for me. Um, I, I actually was going to attend a junior college in California. Some things happened that fell through. And one of my good friends, uh, Dewan Piper, who actually went to North Idaho Junior College, hit me up and was like, man, you need to come here contacted his uh coaches and they they were like man we we want you here and that that next in 2015 I attended North Idaho College and um I actually played with some really really talented dudes and uh we had uh amazing team uh we went 30 and 0 and uh went 30 and 0 uh won our first game in our conference tournament lost a championship Got in that large bid to go to the Division One National Junior Junior College Tournament. Um, we were a five seed. Actually got upset in the first round. That's a different story, but um, played with a lot of talented dudes. Um, I think, I believe six of us um, got scholarships and left that year. Five of us went Division One, one D2. So it was a talented team. I definitely wasn't the, the best player on that team, but I was for sure um, – you know, one of the hardest working for sure and was willing to just do whatever to help our team win. And um, it just, it worked out for the ble- uh, for the best. Junior college was for sure a blessing in my life. Okay. We've had this conversation before, but I want to ask again. You're on the West yeah. Coast. Yeah, yeah. Why South Dakota? Yeah, I mean, when... Uh, when you hear South Dakota, when uh, you're from Washington on the West Coast, we've got, got a lot of things going on over here. Um, I, to be honest, I thought that was – clearly, you know, it's a state, but when I hear it, I was just like, what? South Dakota? Like, you know. And uh, it was right after the, uh, our we lost in the national tournament. Um, I played well my last couple of games, so I was starting to heat up a little bit and – started having some schools build interest in me and uh university of South Dakota was one actually. And, uh, uh, actually my, my brother told me, you know, to check Facebook cause I, ne- I, I don't really, I don't really use Facebook. He said, check, check Facebook coaches, coaches contact you all the time on Facebook. So I got on Facebook, seeing uh, some coaches on there. Um, coach Eric Peterson, who is now at Utah state, um, contacted me and, you know, we started talking, developing, but, you know, still in my head, I'm like, this is South Dakota. Like, I'm not going to go here, you know, no way. Um, so um, they were like, man, you just need to come out for a visit. Cause I mean, everything up until the visit was great. Like I was developing relationships with the coaches. They, they reached out to me, um, coach Peterson, coach G, uh, coach Smith, me and him used to talk a lot on the phone when he's recruiting me. And uh, they're like, man, you just need to come out here for a visit. So me and my mom came out for official visit, and to be honest, it just it just felt right. It was a nice fit. Um, uh, the campus was nice. I liked 
where it was going. You know, they were building the new arena. So for a player, that's 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 very that's very uh, appealing to you. You seen all these things being built, the new weight room, new arena, new locker room for for men's basketball. The training facilities was was they're some of the best I've seen. So I was really appealing, and um, it felt like a family atmosphere, which I. I come from a big family. My family is really important. So it was a nice fit for me. And I mean, like I said, uh, I never in my life thought I would have ended up in South Dakota, but it's turned out to be uh, one of the best decisions I've made and uh, made a lot of connections out there, which I'm thankful for. Yeah, you love it here. I know you do. You love it here. You can't keep, <laughs> keep finding yourself back here all the time. Um, before the coronavirus came out, uh, Red was going to come back and work some camps with us, and he was going to help out a lot with our summer team. So we were super excited about that, but then all this had to happen. So hopefully it passes soon and we can get you back out here and get you in the gym with uh, with Sam and Alan and myself, get in the gym, get after it. Um, so came to USD. Um, here's the one thing about you that's different. The JUCO players have uh, – there's a stereotype where they come in and, and, you know, most of them, they got this ego, like I'm better than some of these dudes, you know, like I need to be the guy or whatever. And that's more so on the, on the smaller levels, like especially if a Division one esque player goes NAI or D2 or D3 or whatever, like they kind of have, they got that head. You weren't like that, especially when I got there. You know, we, I mean, my freshman year at USD, we had a really good team. And, and you started, but you played your role. And your role changed in your three years at, at USD. So talk about kind of how, like, why why you are accepting of, of changing your role year to year. I mean, there was a year you're playing the four, and next year you're playing more of the five, and then you're not, year you're back at the four again. You got to focus on rebounding. One year you got to score more, one year you don't. You know, like, talk about, like, the importance of, for players – unchanging their roles year to year uh i mean for me um for me i just i just love playing so whatever i can do to get on the court i love playing i love competing and i love i love winning so for me whatever i can do to to get on the court and play um that's just what i'm gonna do and you know uh i've always been that way since i was younger um, I've always played on, um, teams that have been extremely talented. Um, uh, even starting on my AU teams back when I was in fifth grade, I was playing with some of the best people in our state locally. So I've always played with extremely talented people. And, um, I was taught at, a, at an early age, you know, you have to, you have to, if you want to win and compete, you have to be willing to sacrifice personal goals and, and things like that to, to, to play and to, to ultimately win. So my mindset has always been like that. I've always been the dude that I'll dive on the ground. I'll, I'll do whatever you ask me to do to, to help the team win and to play. So when I got to USD, we had uh, my sophomore year. Um, we had an extremely talented team. We had Tyler Flack, um, had, is a USD legend for sure. He's a great, great player, great college basketball player, very exciting. Um, we had Matt Mooney that was coming off his retro year, who's clearly also another USD legend. Mm -hmm. um, he's done some some crazy things in his college career. He's doing phenomenal now. Um, I mean, we had extreme Trey Dickerson. I mean, his talent speaks alone. He, he came from, you know, Iowa. Um, he's an extremely talented player, very gifted. We have Carlton, who's probably one of the most athletic people I've ever played with. So our team was was really talented. So um, Coach Smith just let me know right away, like, you know, yeah, I, I you know, I think you, you can help us out. Um, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to be like uh, you're you're the Michael Jordan, you're the Kobe Bryant or anything in this team, but I think you can help out. So definitely my first year I was uh, – I played a lot of – I played the four, played a lot of defense, rebounded, um, was kind of like a, a steady score, contributed a little bit here and there. And, uh, you know, just did all the really the small things. <clears throat> My junior year, um, our team was um, very talented. Um, probably the best team sent in my three years at South Dakota. Uh, 
Um, I was definitely my role, my role increased, but not in the, the way people probably imagine. I, I wasn't asked to really to to score a whole lot. Um, but me and Mooney were definitely, you know, had bigger roles on the team that year. And um, we were we were really hungry because we wanted to prove a lot of people people wrong um, after our sophomore year when we lost in the semifinals. Um, so we were really hungry and we were just all really motivated as a team to, to just not really have personal goals or anything to just, to just win and, um, try to win a conference championship. So, like I said, um, I was just really motivated that year to just, just win at any means necessary and help out the team. Um, my senior year, lots of things changed. Uh, coach Smith left, most of our coaching staff left except, uh, Coach G, um, we brought in some new people. Uh, me, Tyler Hagedorn, and uh, Logan Power, Dan Jack were the seniors of the group. Um, Dan was going through some things with injuries. Um, and so me and Hags knew really that we was going to have to step up a lot for the team. Um, so I, I was prepared, you know, mentally to, to – increase my role and I knew I was going to have to do a lot more than I did the years before but uh like you said Tyler Hagedorn went down um he was down for a while he kind of had an injury where it you know just took time and time to see um how his foot was healing and stuff so uh yeah I was and we 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 lost some guys that had size and stuff and uh I was asked to play a lot of five. It was probably one of the worst things. Uh, I hated playing the five, if I'm speaking uh, honestly. But, I mean, like I said, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it to, to help my team win. And um, it, wasn't, it wasn't how I imagined my senior year or anything. But we had some good games, some good moments. And um, I still wouldn't change those experiences for anything. So I think, I think players always see, think that, they always see, you know, you grow up watching your favorite players, guys in the NBA and stuff. You watch LeBron, you watch the Kevin Durant's, you watch uh, all these guys, the Kyrie's and stuff. And clearly, these are the most these are the most talented basketball players in the world. They're 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 elite elite group of basketball players. So, you grow up idolizing these guys because they're they're scorers. They are tremendously talented, and you feel like that that's you. And on a team, there's only there's only so many guys that are going to be asked to you know score the basketball. So people have to be willing to to understand that it's okay to have a role where you might be asked to rebound, you might be asked to play defense, you might be asked to pass the ball, set good screens. Like all those things are good. You at the end of the day, as a player, you should just want to be on the court and play as hard as you can and accept your role that your coach asks you. Mm-hmm. Moral of the story is you're willing to do anything to win. I think that's kind of. As to sum it up, you you got to be a, you got to be willing to do anything to win. Anything to win. So it's kind of a. I mean, I I hate talking about it more than anything, but uh, your sophomore season, we lose to SDSU in the semifinal, and your shooting, especially from outside, really improved. Like it skyrocketed after that year. Did you take a lot of mental motivation from that loss to, to push yourself even harder? Or I guess the question is, is for should players take losing as a driving force to to get in the gym and go after it? Uh, I mean, losing alone shouldn't be your driving driving factor. You should always want to find that thing to, to improve your game and, you know, just sharpen your tools and stuff. But uh, for me, losing my junior year in that championship, yeah, that that was that was uh, it hurt a lot because I felt like I could have I could have helped the team a lot more. I know uh, Coach Coach Otts and SDSU had a had a good game plan. Uh, it was never the fact that I couldn't shoot the basketball. It was just I uh, I wasn't really confident in it at that moment and wasn't really asked to. So you know they. They played off me a lot, and I I didn't want to be put in that situation where I was, um, you know, sitting on the sitting on the bench when I could be felt like I could be helping more. So um, 
I came in, um, Coach Lee came in too, and he said, you know, I need you to be able to shoot the basketball a little more. Um, he said, I think you you can shoot. Your shot looks good. I just need you to shoot a lot more this summer and just get comfortable with it. So know that knowing that coming into your off season was was big time for me, and I just really focused that that summer just shooting a lot, like just a lot. I remember Coach G would get in the gym with me, and we'd just we'd literally in forty minutes put up hundred like a couple hundred shots real quick, and um, that would we'd do that basically every day that I was in Vermillion and got back home. Worked out with my good friend Bogdan, who was getting ready to head overseas to play professionally his first year. So um, he's a tremendous shooter, and we just shoot constantly. So I would say you can definitely use losing to to motivate yourself to to get better. But um, I think personally, you should have a fire in yourself that that you're always trying to find ways to sharpen your game and and just improve. Absolutely. I mean, losing a game should be more short ter- short term motivation than anything. But um, here's the biggest thing that that just in my time being around the program with you that that I really took away uh, outside of, of what you put on the floor, your work ethic, you know, was your leadership and your ability to hold everyone accountable. Now, that's a tough word for a lot of younger kids today to swallow because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But if it was a day we were in practice and somebody was slacking, you weren't afraid to let them know. And so I want your definition of leadership. Oh, tough man. question. Uh, my definition of leadership um, is definitely a, t- a- it's tough. It's tough being a leader. It really is. Um, you know, leaders are always going to get criticized. You're always going to have, you're always going to have to uh, deal with the tough questions, the tough problems, but um, being a leader, you're just someone that has the ability to, you have the ability to, to help others or lead others in situations that, um, might not might be uncomfortable or they're not used to or they're just not that's not their character to to step up or do the things in those situations so it's just um basically just to me i think a leader is someone that just is not scared to to step up to at that moment and ask more of people or explain things or just guide people Absolutely. Two, two quick questions before we get to the last one. So quick question, quick answer. Um, last summer, you were out here. Uh, you came up to Sioux Falls. You got to work out with Coach Willard and Coach Bertram. Talk about that experience, because I don't know if you knew what you were getting yourself into when you walked into that gym that day. Uh, talk, <laughs> about, talk about those two in your workout, your handful of workouts that you had with them. Yeah, so, you know, Sam uh, and Alan are, are great dudes. Um, I met them through you, actually. You know, I asked you if uh, um, I told you I was going to be in Sioux Falls, staying up there for a while, needed some workouts, some, some gym time, and you told me you'd take care of it. So I didn't know exactly what I was getting into. Um, but uh, it, it's been great. They've they've been uh, great dudes. They've uh, checked in on me, made sure uh, – I'm doing well, and um, they really uh, took me under their wing. Like uh, they've known me since I was I was I was little. Like um, so, I really appreciated that, and um, they really really did help me develop some skills and some things that uh, I needed going into my first year professionally. And um, I've still stay in contact with them, and um, they they you know, have been great people to me. And um, I love I love their workouts. I love what they do. I love what they represent. So I'm forever thankful to them. Absolutely. Uh, before I ask my next one, if anybody has any questions for Red, put them in the comments. And I think that, that he'd be happy to answer them. So be sure to ask any questions about USD, about college basketball, anything. Uh, he can, he's a knowledgeable dude. I can vouch for that. All right, so we talked about about that. Uh, you played pro for the first time this year. So, and did you? I mean, 
what did you take away? Did you learn anything new, like anything that kind of stood out uh, different? Obviously, you're living in a foreign country, so you got to go through that. I'm more talking about like basketball and everything. You know, uh, is there anything different that you had to take away? Uh, I mean, for me, it was uh, it was it was different. Um, it was the first time I was really really asked to do to 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 do a lot as a player in a long time. Probably this is my my role as a player has probably not been like this since I was uh in high school, to be honest. So I was doing a lot. Um, But uh, I wouldn't say there's, you know, basketball is basketball at the end of the day. Um, I would just say the level of of play is just different. The game is, the game is faster. Um, um, Guys are, guys are playing, honestly, they're playing for, for their money. They're playing for their paycheck. So they're, so, so people are hungry out there, you know, and um, um, they're not going to let you just come in and just um, get anything easy. So I learned that, you know, uh, you have to be smart. The, the, the knowledge of the game, I think, especially in, in Europe, is, um, is really good. Um, they're very knowledgeable. They have very high basketball IQs. So I definitely had to learn, uh, step up my basketball IQ and uh, – um, just really pay attention to the game. And I would say the one big thing that for me after, after this first year is just skill development. Um, I play for a team that, uh, you know, they, they have a, a youth academy and develop a lot of younger players. So our head coach was, would do a lot of skill development with us. And uh, uh, I would say that people need to really focus on their skill development that's the one thing I picked up and um I think people you know must like you know at at a pro level you still got to be extremely hungry and you got to want to work on your skill each and every day and just develop um and you just have to get out of your comfort zones and develop things and do things that that you weren't used to necessarily before yeah, that's good. It doesn't sound, it doesn't look like we're going to have any questions, so I'm just going to get right into my last one. Now, this is a tough question, so if you need to take your time thinking about it, you're good. Uh, but I've been asking this question a lot, and, and not many people have had a definitive answer. Why do you love basketball? Why do I love basketball? Mm-hmm. I love basketball because uh, it's a uh, – to me, it's kind of, I would guess I would call it a, a art form, to be honest. It's a way you can express yourself. Um, I, I think especially basketball, you know, um, football, there's clearly talented people, but uh, there's only, so you can only run a, a go a go route the same, you know, a certain way. Like, but basketball, you can, people can, it's different about basketball. So you can always put your own personal touches and, it's always been, for me, it's always been a, an outlet as I got older and, you know, um, things might be going on outside of the game. It's always been a way for me to, to, to take those things and just play, forget about them and just play. And, um, it's been a way for me to just, to just travel and do things that I've never imagined in my life. I just, I love basketball because it just, it, gave me a way to express myself and it gave me opportunities um, that I never, I never dreamt about. And um, like for that, I'm, I'm forever grateful to that, to that little orange ball and, and that hoop, man, that's, that's why I love it. It's just, it's always been there for me and uh, it's gave me that outlet and that, that way to express myself. That's the best answer I've had so far. Congratulations. Tom. That's awesome. Nobody's ever, nobody has an answer for that question. Nobody ever thinks about that. Somebody did end up asking questions. My guy here. What Let's was see. your driving factor before you even got to the college level? How did you maintain that drive even when things got tough? Um, my drive to uh, – before I played college basketball, I wanted to be the best basketball player I could be at that time in the state. I wanted to win a state championship, so – 
Um, I fell short of that, but um, it really drove me and my teammates at that time. And another personal factor is I, I wanted to go to school and have the opportunity to go to school and say that um, I was debt free and I didn't have to make my parents or anything uh, pay for anything. So that was a big factor. Um, but uh, it was just also also always just for the love of the game. And once I got into college, I still, I, to this day, I still love the game. And um, my driving factor is just constantly just trying to get better and um, just getting better and see see where I end up. Um, just trying to play at the, the highest level I can and, uh, you know, just enjoy it. If you remember uh, Jamal... Uh, my brother's friend, he asks, uh, what is the greatest lesson the game of basketball has taught you? What is the greatest lesson? That's a good question. That's a great question. Uh, man. Um, to be honest, the game of basketball has taught me the biggest lesson it would probably be just to, if you want something, you just really, you really have to work hard. You have to put in the time. You have to put in the effort. It's not always going to be easy, but uh, you have to put in the time. You have to put in the, the sweat. You have to put in the tears. You got to be willing to sacrifice uh, to go get something. So um, definitely, definitely uh, would we'll probably say that that's the biggest lesson basketball has taught me. You just um, nothing comes easy and you just got to work hard no matter what to, to get where you want. TP, your boy TP asks, favorite memory at USD? <laughs> uh, man, I, I got a lot of lot of great memories at that place. Uh, I love I love uh, USD. I love Vermillion. I love South Dakota. It's been great to me. Um, but favorite memory? Uh, uh, one that comes right away to mind is going to Spain. Um, my, my sophomore year, that was the, my first summer there. We had a, a chance to go to, to Spain for a foreign trip. So that was a good time. Um, really bonded with a lot of the guys on the team that year. Um, also winning, uh, the regular season, uh, conference title. My sophomore year was big. And, um, uh, I would say just a lot of the road trips too, with the guys, those, a lot of those just all jumbled up together. Those memories are all, are, they're unforgettable. They're great times. Playing at Duke. Oh, Duke was a great experience. Great Kansas. That was, yeah. I got yeah. a great picture from that. So there's been a lot of great memories. Um, I would say a lot of them, uh, a lot of those memories are with my teammates that, you know, a lot of those guys I consider family now. So, um, yeah, um, a lot of, a lot of great memories. That's a tough question to answer. Coach Bertram asked, if you could go back and talk to your 16-year-old self and give basketball advice, what would you say? Man, I would tell myself to go to work even harder. For a, for a time there, I, I wasn't really – I wasn't too hungry. Um, I just – I would just go to the gym and just uh, uh, just mess around, um, you know, play up and down. But uh, – I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, really doing anything. I wasn't working on my game. Um, so I just tell myself to just, to just go even harder. What you thought was, was going hard at the time was, was nothing. And I was, uh, capable of so much more. And also at that time for me, I would tell myself to put myself in more uncomfortable situations. Um, mm -hmm. a lot of people, especially when you're younger in high school, everyone, a lot of people are trying to fit in and do all these things. I would just tell myself to put myself in more situations where I was uncomfortable or felt uncomfortable to grow and just uh, um, put myself in those situations to be in better, uh, better places as a basketball player.